I'm Alessandra Barrett, Senior Content Editor for JOC, and I'm at our 2019 Container Trade Europe Conference with Sandra Carlson, Head of DGF Go Green Europe for DHL Global Forwarding. Great to have you here today, Sandra. Hi, thanks for having me. Cargo owners have more choices when it comes to shipping in a more green fashion. We have a panel here at the conference that's looking at the impact of regulations such as IMO 2020. What can you tell me about the expectations on the consumer side for what IMO 2020 really is going to mean? Yeah, that's a good question because um, from from our experience, um, the IMO 2020 rule starting in, in January, uh, lowering the sulfur content um, of the fuels is seen as one of the big um, steps forward in, in shipping industry to make it more environmentally friendly. And it will contribute significantly to um, improving the air quality. But uh, what's often um, forgotten in the discussion um, is that it's just focusing on the sulfur content. So the actual uh, main uh, contributor to the um, climate change, the um, CO2 or the um, carbon dioxide emissions, are not part or will not be reduced um, by this new or um, change in, in next year. So in terms of the expectations, um, it will not automatically reduce the carbon footprint of, of customers um, or um, shippers um, with the surcharge, and they will have to actively um, do their part to reduce carbon emissions, um, and it will not automatically happen um, with, that, um, with that change next year. And the, the regulation is just one, oh, it's the first step of a series of other measurements the IMO has to do. Uh, obviously, they have um, released a really, um, really cool and ambitious target of um, reducing total carbon footprint by 50% um, by 2050. But however, one must say, even though it's really ambitious and really needed, it's not enough. Um, so it has to go even further. And um, that will be a challenge ahead for shippers, um, the, the whole industry. Um, how to achieve that. Um, so the sulfur regulation next year is a really needed first step. But always has to keep in mind it's not um, reducing the, the carbon emissions of, of transport. So to that end, though, what do you what are your thoughts on carbon offset? What is, does that really, in the grand scheme of things, is that really going to help anything? Um, carbon offsetting is uh, indeed a very good measurement. So um, to um, really balance your emissions. So carbon offsetting basically works very simply that you buy carbon credits uh, in the equivalent amount of carbon emissions you have um, produced. However, um, one has to keep in mind that you're just um, compensating. You're not contributing to actually reducing the, the carbon footprint. And uh, the, the goal should be to make shipping more cleaner and more sustainable and also valid for the future is that you're working on reducing um, the footprint. Um, if you think that currently um, the um, carbon emissions from uh, mar maritime shipping is, if you would compare it to a country, it's the sixth largest worldwide in terms of emissions, so that's really huge. <laughs> it's a challenge. Really. Yeah, but keep in mind also, I mean, it's the most efficient way of transporting if you compare it to other transport modes, so shipping is really a good way of transporting, but in the future probably will account for 17% of total global emissions. And um, if you just compensate, I mean, companies would have to spend a lot of money to compensate all that uh, emissions. So um, offsetting, yes, if you don't have another choice. Um, but I would say and recommend to first look into improvement options to really reduce uh, and not just um, set uh, into to carbon offsetting. What technology or... Uh, option are you the most excited about when it comes to really zooming out and looking at the changes that can be made in our industry? Um, I mean, in the industry, we are kind of between two S-curves, or you could call it two the development curves. Uh, so in the past, uh, in the last years, the industry got kind of more calm efficient automatically by, the, you know, we have the new 20,000 TU ships on the market, um, slow steaming is practiced, um, you have better technologies to arrive or to, to schedule the port arrivals. However, um, these 
improvements with the um, equipment at the moment, they have kind of reached the limit. So um, just from the market, not much will happen automatically in terms of um, efficiency improvement. And the second curve, second S curve, will be really about true decarbonization and all these technologies, um, really cool ones like um, these power fuels, synthetic fuels, um, hydrogen as a, as a measurement. Um, they're already all in the market, but just small scale. And um, that's it has to be leveraged. It has to become more available for the um, international deep sea container shipping. But what's really exciting at the moment, if um, uh, shippers want to um, re really reduce their carbon footprint right now, they can look at, um, for example, optimizing the inland transportation, you know, how you get the cargo to the port from your warehouse or the other way around by you know, looking into modal shift with rail or barge as an alternative. You can look at the fill rate of your container because obviously if you have an under, underutilized a full container, you can look into co-loading, into less than container loads to, to save emissions and maybe also even cost. But really cool is um, biofuel. So sustainably produced advanced biofuels, um, they can reduce up to 100% um, carbon emissions at the moment. And that's something really, it's, it's a blend in, it can be blended in into the, the standard fuel used in container ships. And if you compare it to the low sulfur fuel from the IMO 2020, uh, it reduces also really the carbon emissions. So I'm quite excited about that one if we get more you know, first mover shippers who are investing in this one, because in the end it works a bit like carbon offsetting, but you get really a reduction of carbon emissions um, with, with this investment of money in, in biofuel instead of carbon offset. What are the biggest hurdles that your customers come to you with? I would say it's a bit of a mix. Um, it's, um, it's a bit the own capacity or knowledge part in the, in the company. Often, if it's smaller companies, they don't have a huge sustainability department to tackle um, that, that problem. Uh, and on the other side, it's also um, the, the availability of, of resources and uh, obviously the financial aspect, um, if you look into offsetting or biofuel, for example, which can be a hurdle for, for companies. And then it's a little bit also the, um, the missing level playing field, I would say, because at the moment... Uh, uh, procurement and um, uh, the, the decisions how to make transport are very much driven by operational aspects like lead time and, and the pricing, obviously. And here the companies who are willing to go for the more environmental friendly transport, um, they are often then um, put a bit back because they would lose the competitiveness. And I think that's a big step which we need going forward that, for example, a carbon price um, would make then a level playing field for everyone if CO2 would get a price to, to compare with and then automatically the options which are um, having a lower carbon footprint will become more competitive ones than, let's say, the originally cheaper or um, faster option. Thanks for sitting down with me today. Thank you for having me. I've been speaking with Sandra Carlson, head of DGF Go Green Europe for DHL Global Forwarding.